shows. We also ask that you please take this moment to turn off all cell phones and beepers. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Judy is very proud to present David Sabella. popular addiction. <laughs> now personally, I don't drink much, I don't smoke, and I don't do drugs. So right away that sounds like a pretty short show. <laughs> but there are a few unusual addictions I have to talk about. And while you're sitting there enjoying your favorite liquid vice, well, I'm sure we can come up with one or two sins in common. <laughs> in 1980 to become a star on my own at age 16 well not really on my own my brother had got me a little studio apartment right across the hall from his so while I was technically living on my own I was really never far away from family my parents liked that idea then Ernie got a tour which took him out and left me in New York alone now you gotta remember that in 1980, New York City was not the Northeast Annex of Disney that it is today. <laughs> oh no, there was sin everywhere. I remember when Caroline's Comedy Club used to be called The Zoo. The walls were this dark red color and they had these cages all along what, well never mind. The point is, at 16 years old, I certainly was. Running wild, lost control, running wild. I 
realized I wouldn't need a college education after all. <laughs> so I went to school where I met a girl, fell in love, got married right after freshman year, and was divorced by senior. <laughs> newly divorced, I moved back into Manhattan. I couldn't afford to live on my own, so I answered a roommate wanted ad in the West Village. It was a great apartment, a triplex on 13th Street. I had a whole floor to myself with a sauna. My roommate's name was Burris. He was a singer. He was literally one of the village people. He was the Indian. Need I say more? Sometimes both in the same evening. <laughs> and I learned a lot through all that. Wherever your head, your heart, and your soul go, well, your brain is surely not to follow. <laughs> Take, for example, JJ. Well, that's what we'll call him anyway. Actually, his, his name was JJ. <laughs> but my friends used to call him the Colombian drug lord. <laughs> Poor JJ never really had a job, always had a pocket full of cash and carried a beeper, and was actually from Colombia. <laughs> he followed me home from the park one day and stayed five years. <laughs> and in those five years, I became addicted. Not to any drugs or anything. Not even to JJ, really. <laughs> Just to the drama. Of all. <laughs> Everything with this guy was a big dramatic ordeal. Finally, five years later, I extricated myself from that situation with just one quick phone call to the INS. <laughs> no, not really. I thought about it. As I was dialing the phone, I thought, no, 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 I can't do this. That's just, it's just too much. So I opted for the Saner route and threw all of his clothing out my five-story window. <laughs> Along with an eight-foot, fully decorated Christmas tree. I missed. <laughs> Like I said, drama. It's a hard addiction to get over. I joined a support group, Drama Addicts Anonymous, <laughs> otherwise known as Duh. <laughs> that was a nightmare. Picture it, 12 drama addicts in one room at the same time. I looked around and suddenly realized, this is not a support group, this is an opera company. <laughs> Finally, later, I met someone who was completely different. He was very sweet, very nice, very normal. I was completely bored. <laughs> That's when I realized the level of my addiction. He was this nice, attractive guy with a lot going on. For me, something was missing. There was no, um, no excitement, no spark. Right. There was no drama. I was having withdrawal symptoms. No moon at all. What a night. Even 
lightning bugs dim their light. Stars have disappeared from sight, and there's no moon at all. Don't make a sound. Even Fido is afraid to bark. What a perfect chance to park. And there's no moon at all. I'll make it clear tonight is right and bright moonlight might interfere. No moon at all above. This is nothing like they told me of. Just to think we fell in love and there was no that he was the way to go, off he went. <laughs> it's okay. We became best friends. And now he's dating another nice, normal, drama-free guy, and well, I wish them all the happiness in the world. <laughs> I do, I do. I'm not jealous. That, that's a sin. Jealous. Not, uh, not, not envious. No, not really. No. Uh, well, maybe a little, um... Bitter. <laughs> Party of one. <laughs> Smoking, please. <laughs> Each night in some cafe, I'm on display until. Up upon the stand, singing with a band. 
while the music plays on. Each night is just a long and endless song until the last couple has gone. Faintly, I must start. Singing out my heart while the music plays on. Oh, what madness to discover music still possesses all of its charms as I serenade. Dancing by in someone else's arms, but I am not allowed to show the crowd what happens when romance has gone. I must hide my fears, singing through my tears, while the music plays on.
day I woke up and I wasn't. <laughs> about 35 and see that it takes 34 years to get there and it only lasts one <laughs> and now it's over <laughs> freshman I remembered. With youth comes assurance. When I was 20 years old, I knew exactly where I wanted to go and exactly how to get there. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> when I was 20 years old, I knew everything. Not only did I know everything, I knew that I knew everything. <laughs> now I'm almost 40. I know with any great assurance is that there's a hell of a lot I don't know. <laughs> In a way, I really don't know much at all. And if you say that I'm simple, you're on the ball. On the ball to say that I'm going nowhere. But I'm going nowhere with love. They all say that I'm not impressive at best. That's okay. I got nobody to impress. My impression is they'd rather be elsewhere. I'm staying nowhere with love Cause it's better to be happy in a cardboard shack Than to be alone in a castle All you get for your money is a heart attack I'd just as soon alleviate the hassle Every day I watch the go-getters go by
Competition winner. Yeah. 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 Principal soloist at Carnegie Hall, five times. Wow. Amy Fisher Hall, four times. Starring role in a hit Broadway musical, been there, done that, got the CDs to prove it. <laughs> in my life, I have already accomplished everything I initially set out to do. My caricature hangs on the wall at Sarnie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's hysterical. What's next? I don't know. I don't even know what it is that I want to be next. You want to know the sin of it? I can't figure out whether that's apathy <laughs> or happiness. <laughs> Because I'm happy. Trust me, I love my life. I love teaching. I love performing. Love it. Where the hell did my ambition go? <laughs> I think I need a little shot, you know? Like you get B12 or testosterone, a little shot of ambition. So this next song is my little shot of ambition. And in fact, it's so ambitious, I need a little more help to do it. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Miss Kirstie Bingham and Miss Michelle Ding. entertainment we proudly present. Thank you. 
my hair while I ride the dunes of air. I think I'll let him fly in my shadow. stand in front of 2,000 people and sing in a tux or a dress, and that doesn't bother me. <laughs> but personally speaking, I'm a little shy. I tend to pull back. <clears throat> and that comes off like aloof. I get that a lot. I'm aloof. I'm standoffish. I'm condescending. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to work against it, and then that just comes off like fake. And I see Maloof and fake <laughs> to great qualities. <laughs> Between therapy and acting class, I spent years learning how to get in touch with my emotions, how to be open to my feelings, learning how to play my emotional instrument. Hmm. Only to find out years later, my emotional instrument turns out to be a kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> In the valley, the moon is shining, and the stars fill the evening sky. But I can't seem to say I love you, and I wish I knew why. It's not easy. I try hard, I try in vain. Every time I begin to say it, it escapes me. Will you 
was written by Mr. John Dankworth and was originally performed and recorded by his lovely wife Cleo Lane. And just in case, yes, yes, just in case you were wondering, yes, that was Cleo's key. <laughs> it never stops me, I tell you. You know, I think really I'm a lesbian. <laughs> I do, I got that whole lesbian thing going on. You know, I meet someone, it's going well. Let's move in together. <laughs> Never mind the fact I can't say I love you yet, I really think we should move in together. <laughs> you know, if patience is a virtue, and haste makes waste, and waste is a sin, like my mother always said, then I'm here to tell you, man, I'm one big old sinner. <laughs> so, take this one and have the speed. Don't you know this time you need more than an Now, I 
Take it for writing that great song. No. Oh, boy. Um, oh, it is so happy. Oh, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, they say the first step in any 12-step uh, program is to admit that whatever it is you're being anonymous about, <laughs> <laughs> Has, has completely overtaken your life. <laughs> you are powerless against it. Mm -hmm. It has invaded your life. It has put you in, um, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Um, embarrassing social and professional circumstances. <laughs> yeah. I have one of those. <laughs> the problem is, there's no 12-step program for it. As a child, I grew up on the open up by classical music. I was haunted. So, as an adult, I had only one choice: go to conservatory, study the voice. But the classes they gave me, I discovered quite gravely were not for the voice that I wanted. You see, in open up, <laughs> a turn on my voice was a to be. <laughs> but I didn't want to be another Pavarotti. <laughs> But if the truth be known, what I secretly longed to be singing miserable songs the
When I auditioned for the show, I sang the only song I knew. I sang it loud, I sang it strong. They noticed me. And as I reached the ending of the song, I held the final note a little long, which gave them the idea that I should be inimitable. Androgynous <laughs> Mary <laughs> Probably not what you were expecting. Sadly for, well, sadly for some of you, just what you were expecting. <laughs> but there it is. And like most great addictions, it's a hell of a lot of fun that eventually gets in the way of everything else. <laughs> it seems that since the great success of Chicago, some people have forgotten the fact that I'm really not a 50-year-old woman. <laughs> I just played one on Broadway. <laughs> and although it has been, I would say, daunting to try to reestablish my professional identity as a man, <laughs> I have to admit I wouldn't trade that experience for anything in the world. I loved it. I loved it like a sin. <laughs> I gotta tell you, when you get a taste of the great white way, now that's a sweet addiction. <laughs> I'm 
people I have to thank for making this evening possible. Among them are Richard Hendrickson for booking me here in the Joint of Judy's and making Judy's my cabaret home. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. I also have to thank your fantastic wait staff tonight who are uh, Mitch and Galen. Thank you. Yes, we yes. do. Yes. Now, see, see now, this is fun for me. But they actually carry things. <laughs> you know, they work. So um, please remember them in your hearts and minds and on the tables when you leave. Thank you. And now I also have to thank on lights and sound, Siobhan Weiss. And this phenomenal band behind me. Yeah. And this phenomenal band, Mr. Mark Hartley. Well, I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, I plan to go right on sitting. Living life out there on the edge, that's where art happens. That's where everything is. More often than not, you'll find me there, having my way with a dry martini. If you see me, come on up, pull up a chair. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into together. <laughs> Watch the world disappear Missed a thing or two way down the line I might go back and get him but I have the time So show me the way to get out of this world That's where everything is Show me the way to get out of this world That's where everything is Everything is going out I want to stay here I want to stick around and watch the world disappear Like to take a few things along But anything that's any good they say Sorts. 
no wigs, no makeup, no dress, <laughs> not, not a dress inside, I wouldn't even let them wear dresses. <laughs> <laughs> and God, let's hope it stays that way. Well, <clears throat> I just have one more thing to say, and that is to all of you, a big thank you.